this episode about a special construction, very special construction, which only works for um, degree four polynomials for quartics. The construction produces a polynomial of degree four, a cubic, and uh, the relation is tight, and it allows to say something about the roots of the original quartic in terms of the um, produced cubic. So for that sake, the cubic is called the resultant cubic of a quartic of a degree 4 polynomial. And the um, special, uh, special feature comes as a mirror of the special um, relation between a symmetric group on four elements and a symmetric group on three elements. Namely, there is a homomorphism. Any permutation of four things can be turned into a permutation of three things. And that again comes from a special combinatorial property uh, that if we have four elements, then there are exactly three ways we can separate these four elements in pairs. And that is really the key for the construction. Well, actually, as you, as you will see, there are two constructions, but I will um, choose the one which is somewhat easier. So let me start with my input, with the quartic, and I will make this degree four polynomial monix. So I will start with coefficient one for the highest degree, and then I have some coefficients, some names used for them. And uh, just imagine that I have my roots uh, called x1, x2, x3, and x4. So this is this four element set I will be turning into a three element set uh, by grouping these four elements in two pairs. And I will um, yeah, there are three ways, so it could be x1 with x2 and then x3 with x4. And I'll um, call it uh, the new variable. I will put arithmetic operations of product in between, uh, in, inside the pairs and the sum in between the two pairs. And this is one way of, of, of turning these pairs into some um, algebraic combinations of roots. Uh, the alternative you could have uh, had pluses here and product in here, but uh, the resulting cubic will be somewhat a bit more involved in terms of its coefficients. So continuing the same pattern, uh, the second new variable will be when I take as my first pair x1 and x3, and then the second pair will be x2 and x4, whatever is left. And then the last choice is x1 and x4 together, and then x2 and x3 together. So uh, if we permute x's, we will have to permute y's in some particular way, and that is this homomorphism from permutations of 4 to permutations of 3 things. So my cubic, my uh, resultant cubic, this g of t, will be such that uh, it will have the roots this wise. That's the meaning of the construction. That's the uh, core of the construction. The rest is just to figure out what these roots are in terms of the coefficients, well, sorry, what the, uh, this polynomial is in terms of the original one. What are the coefficients of this polynomial in terms of the original coefficients? And that can be done using the theory of symmetric functions, symmetric polynomials. So the leading coefficient, of course, will be t cubed. And then the um, uh, coefficient for the square will be, well, by the other formulas, will be negative sigma 1 of y's. And then uh, the coefficient for the next, for the linear term, will be positive sigma 2 of y's again. 
and the free term will be negative sigma 3, negative the product of all roots. So all I need to do now is to find these uh, elementary symmetric functions of my new three variables in terms of elementary symmetric functions of my original four variables. So that will give me um, the answers for the coefficients. I will start with sigma 1, which is just the sum of uh, my y's. And I will not write it down, I will just write down the first summand, which is the first of these y's. Uh, and I don't need to look at the rest because um, what I need to find in this expression is the leading term, and this is the leading term of the first summand of y1. And this is the highest uh, in lexicographic order, so the leading coefficient is x1, x2, the vector of uh, the powers is 1, 1, and then two zeros. The method says uh, list all small vectors, and they're none. So that must be an elementary symmetric function, and it is, of course, if we just see what happens when we sum them all, we have a sum of all uh, possible products of our x's, all six of them. So that is called sigma 2 of x1, x2, x3, and x4. I'm not going to write the, variab the variables for my sigmas. I'll just write them as sigmas when they will be um, uh, polynomials of x's. So that is the answer for sigma 1. Sigma 2. Sigma 2 of y's is, um, I'll write y's, is the sum of all possible products. And I'll have three such products, and I'll just write the highest. So much. It's um, coming from taking the highest two, first highest, uh, expressions and axis, and then taking their product. So the total comes after two more terms, two more products will have to be less in terms of the highest monomial. And the highest monomial in this product, that's what I'm after, is x1 squared, x2, x3. So again, everything else is less. The leading, um, the coefficient, the, uh, the, the, sorry, the vector of powers is 2 and 1 and 1 and 0. And there is just one more vector which is less than this, is the vector with coordinates 1, 1, 1, 1. So the elementary symmetric combination with the highest vector uh, like this is sigma 1 and then sigma 3. And here we'll just have sigma 4. So we'll just have one unknown. I will can use a pencil, call it alpha. And to determine this unknown, well, I can substitute, uh, say, all ones in the both sides of this equation. So all ones, uh, if I substitute instead of x's, all ones, each of my y's will become 2. And then I'm plugging 2's in the sigma 2, which is the sum of three products of these. So I'll have 2 and 2, 2 and 2, 2 and 2 together in products. Um, each of such is, is 4, so I'll have 12 uh, for this value. And then I have sigma 1 on, uh, again, 1, 1, 1, 1 is 4. Sigma 3 on 1, 1, 1, 1 is another 4. And then sigma 4 is the product of all, so this is just alpha. So all we have now is uh, 12 uh, on one side and 16 on the other side plus alpha. Uh, that makes our alpha negative 4. And the last thing I need to compute is sigma 3 of y1, y2, and y3, which is nothing but the product of the three that I will write down. Expressions of x's. Uh, 
and again all I need from it to start uh, my uh, template is the leading term. Uh, this is the leading term in the first factor, the leading term in the second, the leading term of the, th of the third. So overall x1 power is going to be 3, x2 and x3 and x4 are coming uh, as linear. So the um, vector of the powers is 3 and 1 and 1 and 1. And now for the template I have 3 and 1 and 1 and 1 giving me sigma 1 squared, sigma 4. Then uh, what else can I have which is smaller in lexicographic sense uh, in the sum being 6 and not increasing. I could have 2, 2 and 2 and 0 and that is just uh, the highest vector for sigma 3 squared. And uh, I could have 3 and 2 and 1 and 1. And that will correspond to sigma 2, sigma 4. And that is it. That is a complete list. And I will not do this computation now. I'll just write the answers and leave it to you if you want to figure the answers. So the answer for the coefficient here will be positive 1 and the answer for the coefficient here will be negative 4. So this is um, what uh, supposedly will tell me what the coefficients for my coming cubic are. Oh, they're here. Um, they are these quantities, but now I have to turn them into the original given coefficients for f. So again here I have negative sigma 1, positive sigma 2, negative sigma 3, positive sigma 4 of x's. Those sigmas I can see on the right hand side of the expressions. So sigma 1 of y's, which is with negative sign the coefficient for t squared, is as good as sigma 2. So that is going to be negative c for t squared. So for, 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 for t I have to use sigma 2 of y's, which in terms of x's is sigma 1, sigma 3, minus 4, sigma 4. Sigma 1 is negative b, sigma 3 is negative d, so the overall will be bd, and then negative 4, sigma 4 is negative 4e, and that comes with plus sign, and that comes as a coefficient for t. And now the free term, which is the sigma 3, which is this combination of elementary symmetric functions of x's. Sigma 1 is negative b, sigma 1 squared is b squared, sigma 4 is e, sigma 3 is uh, negative d but squared, it is just d squared, and then with negative 4 sign, sigma 2, which happens to be c, and sigma 4 e, so negative 4 c e. And that is the coefficient for the free term, and that is the answer, the formula for the resultant cubic. And um, just to finish with one more property, a nice property of this cubic with respect to the original quartic. Let's look at the differences of uh, the roots of the cubic. So y1 minus y2, for example. That is x1, x2 plus x3, x4 uh, without x1, x3, plus x2, x4. So that is uh, nothing but x1 minus x4, product of x2 minus x3. It's easier to go from right to left, because yeah, if you want to collect um, the positive um, products, uh, you will have x1 with x2 and we will have x4 with x3. So just matching this here and the rest will be negative. Similarly, uh, y1 minus y3, x1, x2 plus x3, x4, without x1, x4 plus x2, x3, is a product of two differences. 
and you could see what are they, so this is what they are, x1 minus x3, the first x2 minus x4, the second. And then uh, y2 minus y3, I will not write it down, I'll just write down the answer. It will be x1 minus x2 and then x3 minus x4. So then if I look at the discriminant of my resultant cubic, it will be the product of all these three all squared. But the product of all these three all squared will be the product of these all squared, which is the discriminant of f. So the discriminant doesn't change when we pass from the original cortex to its uh, resultant cubic. It stays the same. Another thing which I'm going to explore in, in Galois theory is that um, the splitting field of this polynomial, the field generated by the roots, will be a subfield of the splitting field of this polynomial because uh, the roots of the cubic are algebraic combinations of the original roots. So um, that is to come later. See you.